This is question 10 from paper 3-1 from the June 2020 exams from Cambridge International. Up the top right of the screen, you'll find a card that'll bring you to my playlist for all my solutions to this paper. And in the description below, you'll find a link to an image of this question. So you can try it before looking at this solution. In this question, they give us this complex number u, and they tell us it's equal to 3i divided by a plus 2i. And they tell us a is real. That's actually a little important. And they want us just to write this out in terms, so it looks like a normal one, x plus yi. Basically, nothing on the divisor here, or at least no complex numbers on it. And that's where some students got tripped up, because we are in fact going to have a divisor. It's just not going to have any i's in it. So that's the secret. So here's what we do. Um, oh, I didn't really need to write that again, I don't think. A 3i divided by a plus 2i. How do we divide complex numbers? Because that's all we need to do here. We just need to divide. We do it by multiplying it by uh, multiplying the divisor by its complex conjugate, a minus 2i. Um, now, if we go ahead and multiply something, the bottom row, we can't just invent it, so we better multiply the top row as well. So we multiply this in, and we get, um, let's, yeah, let's do this quickly enough. 3i times minus 2i will be minus 6i squared. The i squared will become a minus 1. So we get plus 6. That's 3i times minus 2i. Then we get 3i times a. So we get plus 3ai. That's the top row. On the bottom row, we get a times a, a squared. We'll get a 2i times minus 2i we'll get, that'll be minus 4i squared, so it's plus 4. And the other ones will cancel. a multiplied by minus 2i, a multiplied by plus 2i. They'll cancel together. That's in fact why we invented this, bot, this, this term here. That's why we use it. So the bottom rows, so the i's and the bottom row cancel. So we're left the bottom row just as real numbers. So I can rewrite this as 6 divided by a squared plus 4 plus 3a divided by a squared plus 4 and times i. That's, that's what they wanted. That's in the form of x plus yi. But lots of students got here and didn't realize they got the answer. They would have got the marks though, once they didn't write anything too silly afterwards. Um, yeah, we've separated out. This is just a real number. This is just a real number. We could say x is equal to this if you want. y is equal to that. Uh, but this is fine. All right, let's move on to A part two. Find the exact value for A for which the argument of U is, sorry, the argument of the complex conjugate of U is equal to pi over three. Let me, let me write that down here. Um, the argument of U conjugate is equal to one over three pi. All right, U conjugate, uh, some people in the world will see that as this. That's just the same as U. Start different conventions and the argument. Um, I think I've seen that written as something else, can't remember right now. But, um, so we'll, we'll show you what it is now. So, first of all, we need u star. Let's uh get that to our u conjugate. U conjugate is just equal to 6 over a squared plus 4 minus 3a divided by a squared plus 4i. That's all the difference between a conjugate is. Once we have the real and imaginary term separate. And then the argument, uh, the argument of um, u conjugate, and this is by convention, it's equal to, or uh, sorry, by um, definition, we have a formula for it. The inverse tangent of the y part, uh, sorry, the conjugate here, the y part minus 3a over a squared plus 4 divided by the x part, or the imaginary part, uh, the component of the imaginary part, divided by the component of the real, or the real part. Uh, divided by, is this number 6? It is, okay, let's uh, assume I'm, I can read my writing. And a lot of this cancels out for us. We do get, uh, yeah, let's write this here. We do get, this cancels down to um, the a squared plus 4 divides the a squared plus 4. Uh, 3 goes into 6 one time, so we get minus a over 2. Minus a over 2. Um, and remember, this is equal to, uh, yeah, here it is up here. This is equal to pi over 3. 
All right, we can go ahead and solve this. We just uh, need to take the tangent of both sides. The tangent will destroy the inverse of the tangent. They destroy each other. So what is the tangent of pi over 3? Let me do it. Yeah, let me... <laughs> we'll, we'll solve it like this. You shouldn't do this on a piece of paper, but on a blackboard I run out of room. Um, we would get minus a over 2. So that's the tangent of this. Is e Well, let me write it out. Is equal to the tangent of pi over 3. So that's minus a over 2 is equal to the square root of 3. Put that in a calculator, I should tell you, or be in your formulas. Uh, rearrange this so we get a is equal to minus 2 uh, times square root of 3. And that's the, the, that's the answer for part 2. Find the exact value for a. Careful not to give them any decimal places. This is the exact value for a. If you have any questions about that, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll rub this out and we'll start on part B. Okay, for part B, they'd like us to sketch on an argon diagram. Remember, an argon diagram is just a real and an imaginary diagram. And then they want us, for, for Z this is, so we're going to put in um, all the, the area that represents Z when we put them into an inequality. Remember, when we use an inequality, we don't get a straight line or anything. We get um, often a straight line with a whole shaded region. Or in this case, we're going to get a straight line and we're going to get a circle or a curve. Um, so how do we do this? Uh, I find there's an easier way to do this. That if, when you get used to it, when you do lots of these questions, you'll see little tricks that come about. For example, here it's Z minus what? That what is 2i, uh, Z minus one plus i, that's gonna be important. Again here, z minus two plus i. That'll help you solve this question actually quite quickly. I'm gonna do a little slower way. I always show students this way and if they want to find their shortcuts, that's brilliant. First, I'm gonna replace z with um, a much more, use, at least for our old style of thinking, a much more useful um, way, x plus yi. Now let me do both of these. I'll do the top one first and then we'll do the second one separately. And so the top one, instead of z, I'm going to write in x plus yi minus 2i is less than or equal to x plus yi minus 1 minus i. Now if I group all these together, I'll get all the real parts. Um, that's just x in this case. I'll get all the imaginary parts. That's y minus 2i. And again, over here, I'll do that. We'll get x minus 1 um, plus y minus 1 times i. So 1 times i, that's where I got this i. And if we go ahead now and just get the absolute value, so remember how to do that. We get the real part squared uh, plus the, the imaginary part squared. So we have x squared plus y minus 2 squared, that's all the square root, and that is less than or equal to x minus 1 squared plus y minus 1 squared, and that's all the square root. Now if we clean up both of these sides and um, square out these brackets, we will get, we could have done this a little faster I think, but we'll, we'll do it in an extra step. Um, yeah, I'll just square out all these brackets. We'll get x squared plus y squared minus 4y plus 4. That's on this side, all of the square root. I'll have to rub this out for now, and we'll come back to that. And that is less than or equal to x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus y squared minus 2y plus 1. All I've done is uh, multiply these brackets out. And this is a uh, square root as well. Let's square both sides, that means I can Go ahead and rub these square roots out. Hey, you could go ahead and write another line or just put a line through it, maybe a squiggly line through it. Um, I'm running out of room though. So we have x squared on both sides, they're gone. We have y squared on both sides, they're gone. Let's get all the y's to the left. Um, this minus 2y will become a plus 2, so we're left with minus 2y. And we lose all the numbers in the x's to the right. Less than or equal to minus 2x, and then all the numbers. What have we got? 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 minus 4 is minus 2. Um, this is looking like a straight line. Let's divide everything by minus 2. 
What happens when we divide by a minus? We have to change the sign. Uh, divide by a minus 2, we get x plus 1. Now this is something we can draw. This is just a line. If we imagine that was an equals, it's just a line. So greater than is just above it or below it. And we'll see that later. Let's write that up here again because I would like to get the second inequality. We have two of these to do. And we have to see where they uh, match. So I'd like to draw this on a picture. But let's first work this out and then we'll have room. I think we'll probably put the picture here and we'll be able to do the match for the second part here. Let me rub this out first and we'll see if we can fit all that in. So we'll try and go a little faster in the second part. Remember, I'm going to put x plus yi in here and we'll, I'll put the, the real parts together already. We'll have x minus 2. There's the x in there and the minus 2 there. And then we will have a y minus a 1 times i. That's from there, and we're going to square these. We'll get rid of the ISO, and we'll put a square root in. Do it nice and quickly here. And on the right side, we just have a two. Nothing to do on that one. I can square both sides. Let's do that in this, in this part. We'll put a four in. You know what, let me leave that as two squared, because it's gonna be useful anyway. It, it already is, because I'm done. I'm already done. What does that look like to you? It looks like a circle. If this was an equals, this would be a circle. I'm not sure why I thought this was going to be longer. Um, I got it straight away. So this looks like a circle centered at the point 2 and 1. Or if we're thinking in real and imaginary terms, and let's do that now, we'll draw an argon diagram. We only need to sketch it, so this is fine what I'm going to be drawing. Uh, this would be the point 2, so let's say 1, 2, and the point I, so one of, on the real part, uh, one, two, three maybe, I think we're going to need a minus one and two, and we'll put in a minus one or two there. So that's one, uh, one, two, three, minus one, minus two, minus one, minus two. These are real parts and imaginary parts. All right, let's go ahead and try and draw both of these uh, things we found here into it. A line is easy enough. Y, um, y equals, think of it, as x plus 1. That means here's the y-intercept part. The x tells us the slope. It's a slope of 1. Goes through this point here. Goes through this point here. It has a slope of 1. And we know that y is bigger than this. And this line, or we just put in some points to test. I like to put in zero, zero as a test. And um, zero is greater than one. No, that's not true. So this inequality points to everything up there. That's what that inequality tells me. That's what this first inequality here tells me. And uh, just to point out, the quicker way to have got this when you get used to it is to notice that this is x minus 2i. There's 2i here. This is, um, sorry, z, I should have said z minus 1 plus i, uh, 1 plus i is here, and uh, this line is actually the bisector of this. The bisector of this will be this. So that's a quick way to get that. And the second one gives us a circle, a circle at 2 um, and plus i, which is here, and it has a radius of r, so let's uh, put there would be one of the, here, here, and here. Let me try and draw this circle. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> okay, that might be the one of the world's worst circles. Apologies for that. We have the center at um, 2 plus i, and it has a radius of 2. That's all I need. And I need to know, is this inequality point inwards? Or outwards. Again, I just like to do a quick little test. Uh, zero, zero would not be in this. Um, so let's see. Actually, no, it's even much easier to test the center. Yeah, I don't know what I'm thinking. Test the center. Two is zero. I is zero. Um, zero is less than two. That's true. This circle is telling me everything inside it. So I'll put a little arrow like this, maybe. Where do they agree? They agree at this point here. This segment in here, and that's what they were looking for. On a sketch of an argon diagram, shade the region 
whose points represent the complex numbers here. This shaded region. The quicker way to get this circle, although it's quite quick this way, is to know is it z minus 2 plus i? There's 2 plus i. That's, that gives you the center straight away. That gives you the center of the circle straight away. And uh, this gives you the radius here. Less than points inwards, uh, greater than points outwards. Still, I like to do it this way uh, for completeness. All right, that's it. Uh, oh, there's one last part, B part two. Calculate the least value of the argument of Z. So remember what the argument is on more of a picture form. Starting at zero, so the argument of two plus, um, uh, two plus I here is simply this angle here. So starting on um, the real axis, the angle starts coming up here. That's, the number gets bigger and bigger. So for example, the argument of the number two is zero. The argument of this, uh, I guess it looks like about 30 degrees or so. Um, going up and up, when will we, because here, here's, here's a Z, here's a Z, here's a Z, there's millions of them. Which is the smallest one? So the first one that would hit would be here. If we had a sweeping arm, yeah, let me use my arm, my arm is long enough. Sweeping arm, the first one to hit would be here. Um, we can see that from the sketch. So what's this point? This is two plus three i. That'll give us the smallest argument. So we're just looking for the argument of two plus three i. That's uh, just equal to the inverse tangent of three divided by two. And if you put that into a calculator, you will get 56.31, I guess, but 56.3 degrees. Or if you put it in as radians, you will get 0 0.983. It will be three significant figures in this case. I always rather put in radians than degrees, but really, if they don't ask you specifically, it really doesn't matter. Either of these are full marks. All right, if you have any questions about that, tough questions they are, uh, especially this second, this last one, very last question of the whole exam. It's a tough one um, if you don't know what you're doing, but it can be quite quick uh, just to grab, uh, especially the circle, it looks all complicated, it comes up quite regularly. I think I see less of the straight lines, uh, but you'll probably see one every exam or two. So it is worth, certainly worth learning. Okay, if you have any of these questions, put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to do any of the other parts from this exam, check out the playlist that's uh, uh, probably around now or check out my channel for other exams. Search the exam and, or suggest an exam you'd like me to uh, put the solutions up for. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.